I started making horses when I was a grad student at UC Davis in 1973. I read the I Ching a lot, and it kept saying to me, be like the sun at midday. And I thought, the only thing I have a chance in hell of shining at was making art. So because of that, I thought, well, I just have to give myself permission to go in the studio, and maybe what I do there will end up influencing people. All of the equestrian or equine art I'd seen was pretty much about war horses. And the, ho the people who had the horse throughout history were the people who won the battle. It was like getting a tank or a MiG jet. You know, a horse was technology. So the first horse I made was a portrait of my mare. It was a, not a war horse, it was a woman. We often thought at that time, if a woman were president, that we wouldn't be involved in all of the wars. And then I got to go see Secretariat, and he was completely covered in mud. The most valuable horse on earth had rolled in the mud and had dried, and he looked like a New Guinea mud man. And mud has always been one of my favorite things. So I made a mud mixture out of paper mache and mud and smeared these horses completely with mud and kind of in honor of Secretariat, and also riding a horse in the spring, you, you kind of chisel off this dried mud like you're releasing the form from the, the stone, like Michelangelo, you know, you, you finally find what color the horse is and you chip all this mud off. Within the mud would be pine needles and little twigs, and, and then I thought, well, if the big ones were so powerful, was it only because they were big? So I wanted to make small ones in C. So when I reduced the scale, the twigs became branches. And that's when I, when I moved to Montana, I realized that I, would, I could use these branches almost like brush strokes or line drawings to create this energy. And so when my horse was lying down, looking like a Matisse odalisque, and I realized that the horses are me, and so if I'm going to lie down in an art gallery with the wolf predator critics stalking me, <laughs> that that is a very powerful position to take. So for me, it was a real feminist statement, and it was an anti-war statement. It was an, an un-war horse. Martin said, we're building a sculpture garden. We need to have a horse. And they had a horse, but it was an indoor one. And I said, well, I don't do outdoor work. And Jim Dine said, you've got to go to Walla Walla Foundry. There's a guy there that makes incredible work. He will help you. So Mark offered me the ability to make my work out of wood and have it not break, and that I didn't have to doctor it. The form in 500 years will still be as I intended it. And the other thing that's wonderful is that the wood with the most wonderful qualities is the wood that's the most fragile. So I was able to start using wood that was incredibly delicate. All I had to do was get it to the foundry. So when I first start the horses, it's really pretty much like a very rectangular painting that is, is standing on four legs. So that I'm really engaged with this composition pretty much at eye level. And for me, it really becomes an abstract sculpture. I work on this part, and then it tells me what happens with the neck and the head. It's like I don't usually go in and predetermine what the horse is going to feel like or who it is. It's like I don't really know. It doesn't become personified until this part tells me the hara kind of what, what is, what's inside of it. The foundry has given me this ability to truly play. I think, you know, making this work was, the patinas about killed me, but making the work was this joyfully quick, wonderful experience. They're bigger than life so that when you're next to them, you feel being next to a real horse, you get this feeling. It's just quiet, calm, power, and their force field influences you. And to have a relationship with a horse, you have to strive to become a better person. 
that is probably why I'm still fascinated with them and why these aren't really just horses. They really, it's this object and you can lose yourself in the wonderfulness of the object, but then the object goes away and stops being an object. It just becomes a, a window or a mirror. And that's what uh, I think the work has become gradually, it's changed. First they were more about horses and then they became less about horses. The more I know about horses, kind of the more horse-like they are and yet also the more abstract.